Alright guys, so this lecture is on daily operations in the ambulatory care setting. Now what I mean by ambulatory care setting is like a walk-in clinic or, or just a regular doctor's office. Not so much the hospital where they're staying um, or like a nursing home where they're staying for a long period of time. It's more of a, where they show up for an appointment, have their appointment, and then leave type of setting. Um, this is a two-part lecture as well. So the first part we're going to be talking about duties of the medical assistant, security, and equipment in the medical office. Um, so with this lecture, we need to be able to define, spell, and pronounce those vocab words. Describe administrative and clinical opening responsibilities performed by us, the medical assistant. Discuss the administrative and clinical closing responsibilities performed by us, as well as daily and monthly duties as well. And then we need to be able to explain the safety procedures in, uh, important in the healthcare facility. And then of course do the following related to equipment in the medical practice. Uh, describe the elements of the equipment inventory list. Explain the purpose of routine management uh, I'm sorry, routine maintenance of administrative and clinical equipment. Explain the steps of creating a maintenance log, performing maintenance, and then documenting that maintenance. And then describe your role in ordering equipment. <clears throat> so, uh, opening the healthcare facility. Uh, that's where we're gonna start with this lecture, is, is as if you are walking into the, your work, to work first thing in the morning. So, when opening that, assume that the office policy requires preparation in the morning. There's always things that need to be done in the office, especially when you first start and open it. So office policy should demand that supervisors be proactive in preventing theft. All right, doctor's office is kind of like a hot spot for, um, you know, people trying to steal things, whether it be money or prescription pads. Um, so you need to be proactive, especially as a supervisor and making sure everything is, is taken care of. A certain number of employees will have keys and will know of the alarm codes for the facility. You don't want to give keys to everybody and alarm codes to everybody uh, because that is not a proactive way of preventing theft. All right, so the best policy is to monitor this access and information um, strictly. All right, make sure you know who has access, who has keys, and who has alarm codes. Um, voicemails. So once you get in, the office is all unlocked, you're ready to go. Voicemails need to be checked or messages from the answering services need to be obtained. So you need to make sure that any information that happened overnight, you guys are, are getting messages from the voicemail um, or from another voice recording system. Voicemails may need to be updated, okay? Computers, copy machines, and other equipment has to be turned on, and then you should pull the appointments for the day. So with the use of electronic health records, providers and staff can utilize the software and see the appointments instead of having to rely on the paper schedule. So you can maybe print off the schedule from the internet when it says pull the appointments, um, instead of looking at the uh, the scheduling book. <clears throat> then you should prepare the reception area for patients, make sure it's clean, neat, and organized, and then the televisions and or white noise should be turned on, whether it be some sort of music um, or a television program as well. <clears throat> From there, you should prepare the examination rooms. Okay, You should make sure that prescription pads are never available for patients that are not just laying around in, in the exam rooms or anything like that. The provider should keep their prescription pads in their pocket um, or if the facility uses e-prescribing, they don't need prescription pads, it's all done on the computer. You should make sure that supply cl uh, closets that are needed are unlocked. And then you should do quality control tests on any lab equipment that need to be uh, done. And then any outstanding patient issues from the prior day should be followed up upon. So if something happened at the end of the day, you didn't get it taken care of, you need to follow up with those tasks first thing in the morning. So that was all about opening. Okay, there's lots of things that need to happen when we open the facility. Okay, and that's, this is part of your homework, guys. You need to actually make two lists for me, one about opening procedures and then one about closing procedures. So this is really important, guys, to pay attention to. So closing procedures, at the end of the day, the medical assistant has to um, assist with closing the, the clinic. So closing procedures could include preparing the charts and documents for the next day. So you print off tomorrow's schedule, get all the charts ready to go. So right when you walk in first thing next morning, you're on top of your game and ready to go. You need to make sure that all computers are shut down, copy machines and all other office equipment is turned off. Your phones need to be switched to voicemail or that answering service so that when you're out of the office that evening, calls are still being picked up and recorded. Um, you need to follow office procedures for handling money. So if you need to make bank, to pay, bank deposits or put it in a safe or something, make sure you're following the office policies on that. And then patient documents need to be filed or put away. Never want to leave any medical paperwork hanging out, anybody's files hanging out and unlocked. Uh, make sure everything is put away where it's supposed to be and secured. 
Um, some more, you need to make sure the reception area is clean, neat, and organized. First thing in the morning when you walk in, makes your job a lot easier. You should have lights, television, and stereo should be all turned off. Ensure that all patients have left the examination and treatment rooms. You never want to leave somebody locked in overnight. Uh, wrist stock rooms as needed so that first thing in the morning, first patient, you're ready to go. Your equipment instruments should be sanitized, disinfected, and sterilized. And then supply medication cabinets should be locked as well. So depending on the facility, the medical assistant may be responsible for turning off the lights, activating alarms, and locking the doors. Most generally, that might be like a, an office manager type of person uh, doing that in most settings. So those are some closing procedures that you guys will have to do. Now, you will have daily and monthly duties that you will need to partake in as well. So it is important that the medical practice be clean and organized, and that is a daily task, okay? That is a daily task for us, it, it never stops. So medical facilities could either employ custodial staff or hire cleaning services as well. So the medical assistant also has responsibilities for cleaning and organizing the reception area and the examination rooms and making sure everything is good to go. Um, and then you should have crash carts that need to be inventoried monthly and those are just supplies on the cart uh, and those need to be make, made sure that everything is, is fully stocked and good to go. So security is a huge issue in the medical and healthcare facilities. All right, so you should always have plans in place that can be implemented when security is, is in question is critical for all people. All right. The medical assistants need you guys as medical assistants you guys need to stay alert for suspicious people or, or just be aware of your surroundings to make sure everything is going all right and and the number one key thing in is with security is just listen to your instincts if, if something appears to be wrong and is not looking right follow your instincts and then follow policy from there um, medical facilities can be a target for those wanting to steal money prescription pads or narcotics so um you know just be aware of that you know we do face threats in our job um, you might not think about it, but there there is risk there. So the staff should implement measures to limit the amount of money available in the building. Um, if you do that, your chances of being you know robbed or, or you know stood up and, and um, you know those become less of a factor if you don't have a ton of money hanging around. So maybe like daily bank runs or or twice a day bank runs or something like that to limit the amount of money that you guys actually have on hand is beneficial. Um, some more security stuff. So some clinics will have code words that indicate specific situations. So it's important to know the terminology that is associated with your clinic. Um, cash drawers should be stored out of sight of patients and visitors. It should never be an easy access for any type of patient or, or anybody that walks into your clinic. Some clinics have installed alarm buttons under their countertops, like banks, so that if something is wrong or suspicious, they can simply hit a button to alert the, the PD or security at the place. Um, and many facilities have moved to locking employee entrance doors at all times during business hours. All right, so the front entrance might be unlocked. However, in order to get into the back side of the clinic, you'll have to have a key or a code. So in high crime areas or low staff clinic or rural clinics, the doors to patient care areas are also locked. So it's, it's just an extra security measures to make sure everybody is being safe. So then we're going to talk about equipment and equipment inventory really quickly before we end up this chapter here. So one of the most res important responsibilities of the medical assistant is to manage the equipment and supplies in the medical office, okay? So the medical assistant needs to know how to operate, maintain, and handle issues with equipment. Each piece of equipment should be identified and, uh, and records need to be maintained of when you're doing maintenance and things like that. So the practices accountant utilizes the equipment inventory list while preparing the tax work for the practice. So that is a little bit out of your hands, but you need to make sure you need to know how to turn on, how to operate, and how to maintain your office equipment. Computer hardware, calculators, and copiers are considered larger office equipment and depreciate over five years, while office furniture items depreciate over seven years. So your office equipment you know, depreciates a little bit faster than just uh, furniture and, and things like that in the office. So if you look on page, um, 180 in your textbook, you're going to see procedure 11-1 and that's how you perform an equipment inventory. So it's important to just kind of read over that and educate yourself. But for each item in the equipment inventory list, the medical equipment, the medical assistant has to document things and they should document the equipment name, the manufacturer and the serial number, uh, when it was purchased and who it was purchased from, and then any warranty information that accompanies that. So you have everything in one, in one place, good to go. Um, and easy to find. And here's an example of that, and that's on page 180 in your textbook, and this just shows an inventory list. 
So an equipment inventory list can be created in a spreadsheet such as Excel, and it provides uses, useful information on, of the administrative and clinical equipment in the facilities. So if you look over here, I'm gonna step onto this side of the screen. You have your equipment name, and that is, for this one for example, is laser printer. Okay, the ma manufacturer or serial number, HP3598XA, that's a serial number. Location and facility number. So it's at the medical assistance desk, and there's the facility number. All right, purchase date, when was it purchased? October 1st, oh, sorry, August 1st, 2000, whenever. The cost was $325. The warranty information says parts and labor expires on July 31st in another year. So that is a very well done equipment inventory list. Okay, equipment safety and maintenance. Now, medical assistance is responsible for monitoring equipment safety and proper functioning. So you wanna make sure everything is working correctly at all times. Any unusual noise or a change in the performance should be investigated and you should figure out what's really going on with the, with the uh, type of equipment. Maybe it's just like a paper jam in the photocopier, maybe you're at a toner, something along those lines. Um, equipment should be routinely cleaned and maintained. And then equipment operation manuals include information on cleaning, routine maintenance, the service schedule, and how to troubleshoot common problems. So if you're ever unsure of how to operate or, or when it needs to be maintained or what you actually need to do, Check out your, um, your operation manual that comes with your piece of equipment and it will help you uh, understand more about that machine. So the owner's an operational, uh, an operation manual and warranty information for each item should be kept in a central location so if you're ever confused or, or have a question about a certain thing, you know exactly where to find it. And many manufacturers have the operations manual available online as convenience to users. So if you misplace your owner's manual, just simply look it up um, online as well. You should find it there. So making a schedule as a reminder to, uh, for routine maintenance is useful. So if it's like once a month or once a week, you know, maybe you should do it at the same time every time so that it's easier for you to understand. And if you look on page one, at the very bottom of page 181, you'll see uh, procedure 11-2, and this basically explains the steps involved in creating maintenance logs and performance, uh, performing the maintenance and then documenting the maintenance um, so there's many different things that the, those maintenance logs should, should include and those are the equipment name, serial number, location of the machine, and then the facility's unique equipment number. All right. From there, you need the manufacturer's date, when you purchased it, any warranty information. So similar to a, uh, an inv equipment inventory log. However, now we need to get the service provider contact information. Who do we contact um, in case it's, it's broke? All right. The date and time maintenance activities were performed maintenance activities performed, and then the signature of the person performing that maintenance. So if you look here, this is on page 181 as well, and this is an example of an equipment's maintenance log. So it is different than the equipment maintenance um, list. So look on your book on page 181, and you will see this. I know it's probably hard for you to see right here, but you will see it there. So equipment maintenance logs are utilized in maintenance activities by the staff and outside repair agencies. So here you have all your information um, about about this item, okay? And then you get down to the maintenance log. So when when was it maintained or what was done to it? So this one was December 15th at 9.56 a.m. Okay, you replaced the toner cartridge and it was done by Marie Van Backel, who is a CMA. Okay, so you have everything there. That way you just keep on top of your things. If machines are not well maintained or anything like that, it might void some warranty information. So it's important that you keep on top of these machines and keep the office running uh, smoothly. So service calls and warranties. So when equipment is purchased, a warranty is given for a uh, specific period of time. Maybe it's like a three year warranty or something along those lines where if anything goes wrong, the, the, they will cover it as long as you are keeping up with the maintenance records, okay? So typically for complex or expensive equipment, the medical practice will contact a service provider. All right, who will come in and fix those things. Usually the cost for on-site repairs is more so than if the machine is taken and shipped to a service provider for repairs. However, if you have to ship a photocopier you know, to somebody else to do the repair, you, you gotta think about your postage that you're going to be paying on that to send it there and return it. Um, it might be just easier for them to come to the office and fix it from there. And some service providers will also loan equipment to healthcare facilities while repairs take place. So if you have to send that away, they will provide you with a loaner as um, until that returns. And then this is the last slide for this section, guys, so a pretty short one here. 
So purchasing equipment. So depending on the size of the clinic that you guys are working in, uh, the process of purchasing equipment may vary. It might land on your shoulders, it might be an office manager or somebody else that takes care of it. So the provider and or so supervisor can also consider leasing a, a piece of equipment. And it's just like leasing a car. You, you know, you buy into it and you make payments on it until it's yours, okay? Or you send it back to get a new one. Um, medical assistant may help the provider or supervisor identify potential new models. So it's your job, guys, to make sure that you're, you have the tools that will help your office run smoothly. So knowing the best equipment out there and, and having it is extremely beneficial. And usually a supervisor or provider has the final say on the new model and new equipment and if the purchase should occur. However, you guys as medical assistants will have input. So it's important to, to really, because you guys are the ones that use the, the equipment the most. I mean, you guys are going to use it daily. So being able to have equipment that is going to be beneficial for you guys will help the office run more smoothly. Um, and that's it for this lecture, guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. It's pretty simple stuff, guys. Opening and closing procedures, inventory assessment. I mean, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Uh, have fun. Keep up the good work.